<laughs> Whoa! You've nearly blown me up several times, Jay. This 3D printer is pretty amazing. This is like Jetson technology. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Welcome to my classic car. Well, I'm back out in California to check out what Jay Leno has got in his shop. He's always got fun things, and he got some stuff in pieces now, Jay. Well, it's a rainy day. It's a rainy again. day. Whenever Dennis comes, it's always a rainy day. <laughs> Dennis so Gage, we weather. thought we'd uh, show you some of the projects we're working on. This is Jim Hall. He's our chief fabricator. Jim, uh, nice to meet you, Dennis. Does all the wonderful fabricating we do here at the garage, and. Uh, you know what this is a chassis for, Dennis? See how good you are? I wouldn't have even recognized this as a chassis. Okay, well, this is a Lotus Elan <laughs> chassis, uh, 1964. This is sort of a revolutionary chassis. That's what made them so lightweight, you see. Not a lot of door guard. It's just all backbone, right? Yeah, all backbone, but no, uh, no side protection. You get hit in this thing, you're over. But <laughs> it made it lightweight and fast, and a production Elan with a radio and heater and everything, and a top weighed, what, 1,400 pounds? Well, your white one was 1508 with Fif fuel in it. 1508 with fuel in it, okay. So what we're going to do here is try and replicate one of the most famous racing Lotuses, the 26R. Uh, we've yeah, got that, the R stood for racing, and that was what they did at the factory to create race cars out of the Elans, which were street cars. Well, you've done, I mean, I see a lot of weld spots in here. Are you just it's, sti stiffening it up? It's stiffening it up. I mean, this is, if you look at the gauge of the metal, it's pretty mm -hmm. thin. Mm -hmm. These are pretty flexy flyers. They're way stronger because of the fiberglass body when it's all bolted together. But for racing, we add all these gussets in. If you flip this over, there are gussets underneath. Added some gussets at the back where the differential bolts in. Just everything to make it a little bit stronger. How about this piece here? Uh, that's our new engine or transmission mount. Right. And uh, one of the things you wanted to do, it's like, <laughs> okay. It's, it's a great car. Jay has described yeah. them as being like the Bugatti of its era. Oh, I think it is. Yeah, lightweight, yeah. extremely fast. Well, power to weight, they, you know, they were just the best. There are very few cars in the real world, in real world road driving, that can keep up with a Lotus Elan. You know, when I was a kid, you know, the Corvette with the 427 was like, I don't know, $5,200. And the Lotus Elan, a little four cylinder, was about $4,400. So why would you buy this little English thing with? Yeah. 115, 126 horsepower, when you could have this monster car. And it wasn't until I got older I really appreciated the finesse and the handling of the Lotus Elan. And I realized there's really nothing much more fun. I mean, we have a McLaren F1, we have the ZR1 Corvettes, and those are all fantastic, but you've got to travel at such a high rate of speed mm -hmm. to have any fun with it. You know, the Lotus, you can literally slide around in your lane, and hardly anything can keep up with you. They're very, very quick cars. <laughs> so you're beefing it up, but I bet, yeah. I bet well, you got more in mind. First of all, Jay ordered from uh, Bernard's engine builder an all aluminum block, two liter twin cam engine. Well, we'll show you this. As you know, the original engine was cast iron. Right. Uh, this is aluminum, so you save it a little bit there. It's a little bit bigger. It looks like a 1600, but it's uh, 2000 cc's. It's a two liter. But let's not get ahead of us. Let's show you the body. Here's the body over here. And this is the this is the the white one. I mean, when we did yeah. uh, lightweight uh, sports yeah. cars, we did the the white and the blue one. Right. At least a look at them, anyway. Did we take my white one out? We never took them out. Okay. Uh, well, this was the white one, and we realized to turn this into a 26R, we would have had to add these fender flares and all uh -huh. this other stuff. And uh, Jim had a guy, a Lotus racing guy, who bought a bunch of these bodies from the factories a number of years ago. So we picked this up pretty reasonably. Jim uh, just did this beautiful fabrication here. I got kind of big feet, so he's made the box to fit my feet. See, we got <laughs> my shoes in here. Anyway. Oh, like, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't always have Jay to help me, yeah. so it's like, okay. <laughs> Nuriyev used to drive these things, these little dainty feet. <laughs> you hit all the pedals. Whereas this, he made this box and he made the pedals good size. To and fit that shoe, right? To, I fit, mean, a... to fit that shoe. Yeah. So this is going to be like a tailor made suit by the time we're done with it. <laughs> so this is. The lightweight body, as you can see. So I did mean, you, this isn't actually the white body. No. Did you save the white body? I have the white body, yeah. This is, uh, this is the, the racing 26 Wow. So. And this body only weighs 74 kilograms. The whole body? Yeah. Whole body. So what, you do the math, that's like 150 pounds yeah, for the whole much. body. Pretty amazing, pretty amazing. And, and when you get hit by with my SUV and this baby, you know it. <laughs> so that's actually you don't, because you're yeah. not here anymore. This is where obviously the roll bar is going to go. Mm -hmm. The 26R did not have the flip-up headlights, uh, so, so you're this, just going to go plexiglass yeah, or plexiglass. something. Plexiglass. This won't have it either. But come on, we'll show you that engine and transmission combination we were talking about. Here is that engine that uh, we had made. It's two-liter. It's 
well over 200 horsepower, which is a lot better than the 115. It's probably two and a quarter, something like that. It's got the big Webers on it. And where's our gearbox? Gearbox is on the pallet next oh, to it. Oh, here we go. Here we are. This that, is, was, that was one of Jay's other things. He heard that their Quaif made a six-speed sequential gearbox. Yeah. Sequential. As you know, the original Lotus was a four-speed. This is a six-speed sequential, just bang, 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 yeah. bang. So this car should be pretty... Pretty fast and pretty pretty bulletproof too. I mean, it'll be pretty, just be pretty a fast. Yeah, but as you can see, this, this is, is it beautiful. Here. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's pretty light too. It's not that heavy a motor. You can, uh, you can lift oh, it yeah. up. Oh yeah, that's not, not that heavy. heavy. Not that heavy. You know, that's an original valve cover, and that's about the only thing left on the engine. That is this is original. Yeah. <laughs> so that's basically where we are here. Okay, so that's the Lotus. That's the Lotus. What, what did you have ripped apart beside it? Oh, right beside it is a car. Most Americans have never heard of. Come here, I'll show you that. Back out of the engine room. Well, this car here, uh, you got here a little late. We just started to tear into this this week. Kind of a fixer-upper. Well, this is a car that hasn't been, hasn't been started since the mid-50s. It is a 1935 Fraser Nash TT Special, uh, TT Replica. This is not a car that is well known here in America. It's well, certainly Fraser and Nash. No, are not, names, not, but even that's same, not even not, no, not, not even, even not, not even the same company. Because this is an English car, right? English car, yeah, totally English car. And the Fraser Nash Club in England is very. I went over there years ago to try and buy one. They don't like them leaving the country. You know, they get a little bit. You know, they, they show up at the dock with sticks. And I said, well, that's not going to happen. So, I knew there were a few in the United States, and I found this one up in Washington State. Uh, it's the real key to these things. These were incredibly fast race cars, especially when tracks were sort of semi-paved uh -huh. because it had this gearbox. This is your gearbox here. They call this a Fraser Nash chain drive. Somewhat primitive, but you can slam shift, bang, bang, bang. It's, you can shift it as fast as you could shift any modern car. That's the cool thing about it is that the chains would jump here with these dogs and uh, makes all sorts of cool noises. It's a solid axle, so you, I mean, there's, no, there's almost like it's locked up, so you, you tend to eat through tires when you slide around corners with yeah. it. But, incredible traction in corners and you could slide around them and they were really fast very lightweight about the size of an MGTD. what a crazy setup though and it looks like it slings an awful lot of oil it does sling an awful lot of oil yeah but that's that's all right you, you oil it yeah, yeah. It's, in fact is that what these are those are so it's got yeah chain you, you lubricators got there if you move that uh, you can move that gear shift the other one this one that's the gear shift you'll see the you can engage oh it's disconnected Wait, oh, it's now disconnected. yeah i'm sorry it's disconnected right now, but that gives you some idea how it works. Here's the, there's the radiator for what's, it. There. What's Here's this? the engine here. That's your drive shaft. Wow. Connects right to there. And the spring on it? That's the spring on your drive shaft. <laughs> this is a Blackburn engine, twin cam, three carburetors. Aluminum block? Aluminum block, very sophisticated. Yeah, you, you know, Fraser Nash would use whatever engines were available. Some had Meadows, some had Blackburn, some had Anzani. And that's what this is. And what, what vintage engine is this? What uh, same as the car, 35. 35? Uh, everything on this car came with it from the factory. They built, what, 83 of these About TT replicas? Yeah. We've got a design and make a new piece on here. Uh, some of the water inlets all rotted out. Oh, yeah. We'll design those on our 3D printer. Again, you're not going to find parts uh, for this engine. Anywhere. Uh, at least, certainly not in the United States. This is a really interesting design, too. When this thing is basically a 1700cc engine. I mean, it's a six-cylinder right. engine, but it's a small motor. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a Ford, doesn't it? It does. It's, a really, yeah. it's yeah. an odd design. Tiny little side-draft carburetors. But, you know, if this said uh, Alfa Romeo or Ferrari on it, it would cost a fortune. But... It was pretty advanced, you know, like you say, twin cam, three carburetors. It makes some horsepower, so when this thing gets back together, it'll go pretty good. Dorothy Hamill, the Ice Capade. <laughs> this 3D printer is pretty amazing. Here it is right here. Let me show you this thing. I still don't understand these things. This is like Jetson technology. It really is. You know, when we were a kid, you'd watch the Jetson and you'd press steak dinner and a baked potato and a steak and a big <laughs> piece of chocolate cake would come out, you know, in two seconds. It's making a part right now. And the way it works is, well, here, let, let's go to the computer. It scans a part. It scans it a million parts per square inch. And it will make you an exact copy. You put a wrench in and you get a wrench out. That, that functions like you don't and get it the functions pieces. just you like get... this. You put an extremely complicated piece like this in, you design this on a computer, you press a button, it makes it for you. And it comes out like that. Comes out exactly like that. 
you broke your wife's vase, she's going to kill you. Right? <laughs> you scan it, you make a new one. You can even put the design on the inside, which the original artist couldn't do. The way it works is, for example, just to see a chain, we put a chain in. Obviously, you wouldn't make a chain out of plastic, but we put a chain in. See, the way it does is you have this, oh, hey, here we go. Essentially, this plastic. And what this does is it scans it at a million points per square inch, 3D, and this lays it on neat, 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 neat. You'll see the thing going back layer and forth. Layer by layer by layer. Layer by layer by layer. It does it in this kind of a wax type material, although not wax. Then you put this in hot water in a solution. This melts away and you're left with your finished piece. So that in there is laying down both the white and the black. Right. And it's calcul the computer's calculated all the space right, that exactly. I need between the chains. So when the black stuff's gone, it functions. For example, here's a fitting for a Stanley steamer. This is made of brass. You're not going to find one of these. So you scan it, and then you take it to a machinist. This is a feed water heater for a white steam car, a 1907. You're not going to find one of these. You design it on the computer. You can either copy the original one and scan it, yeah. or you can draw your own and make a new one. It'll make you an example. There's not a, a piece for your car you can't make. You can do connecting rods. You can, if, you have, if you have a car and your door handles are missing, you got a picture of the original door handle, scan the original picture. It'll make you the original door handle. Now, it'll make it in this plastic, and then that, from that you can right. make the mold. For example, if I was to take the metal original piece to a pattern maker, they wanted $4,500 to make the pattern for this. I got it made in metal for $200, everything done. OK, you saw the part in plastic. Here it is in metal. The guys designed it on the computer. We took it to a guy. He made it for us. We now have a brand new 1914 14 water pump. Water pump for a premier car. A car that was off the road, not usable anymore, can now be driven and, and used again. And this way you can also, with that prototyping, I imagine you can test fit and stuff yeah. and see if you're for right. Example, for example, bit. we made some mistakes on this cover. We're going to make another cover. We made it too thin. Yeah. So if you put some more metal in there to straighten it up, and we're going to make a new, going to cast a new cover, a nice finished one. But that's, that's basically it. Well, you just said you didn't want to be blown up. I don't want to be blown up again. Yeah, the man's mustache looked like yours last week. Yeah. What a weenie. Just get the hair on the arms. We don't get blown up. Yeah, right. Just, just get burned a little bit. Yeah, now and then. Light, baby. Come on. Smoke signals. She'll clean up. See, once it's running on gas, natural gas, it'll quiet down. Advance it. Yeah. And this would run for 24 hours a day. What did this thing do? This came out of the oil fields in, uh, out here in California. 1,800 cubic inch single, single cylinder. cylinder. Yeah. But very smooth. Put your hand on it. See how smooth it is. Oh, it's like putting your hand on a big rhino or something. It's just sort of... Well, you know, I mean, all this stuff careening around and with really no shields or no... No, I mean, OSHA was, was not like no this. No OSHA back then. Does this fire every... every time, or is this hit and miss? Oh. Now we're going the other way, aren't we? That's Can it do good. that? Well, you tell it no. <laughs> right, 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 right. I'm not, no, I'm not arguing with this thing. And this is what you do on rainy days in California. You just come inside and you run your stationary engines. You want to rotate it? Whoa! Advance. How all this work? And this is just, you just put oil there and it just breathes? Yeah. Yes, it seeps down in there. But it could tear you to pieces. Yeah, yeah. Look at this piston. And you'll see she's got a thermometer on there to gauge your water temperature. Since it's not under load, it won't really get that hot. So that, that's a water-cooled, it is water-cooled? Water-cooled, yeah. What, is that jacketed then? Yeah, it's jacketed. These are all your oilers. Magneto, cam. These used to run 24 hours a day, all day. They just never wear out. Guy would come around and refill the oil cups every now and then. 
But they're just beautiful built machines because they wear all their machinery on the outside, you know? You can see everything moving. Well, you know, you never cease to amaze me, Jay. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah, it is, you know, it's... Rainy day fun. Rainy day fun.